<laughs> think about what you did. But nobody makes it to the end of these things. Come on. <laughs> the Broken Agenda Podcast. Sponsored by Laughing Rock Technology. <laughs> Um, and that manages, that probably takes the place of one to two people. Um, and we're, we're fully integrated with that. And even furthermore, with, um, with Noodle, we use Toast as our technology toast. class uh, platform. Sounds yeah, like, toast is great yeah. to work with. Oh, yeah. it really is. Yeah, they do it sounds job. like cryptocurrency. It does a little we bit. We use Toast. It does, yeah. <laughs> and, well, we had a Toast rep, so he has an IT company down in Lancaster. I forget what his name is, but um, but nonetheless, is what he does is he goes around and installs all the Toast products. Yep. And um, you have a question, you just call him. If, if it's, you know, machine operated. So I call him, you know, it's like two, three weeks after, and I call him, like, hey, this isn't working or whatever. He's like, yeah, you know, this, that, the other thing. He was great. Um, it costs $1,000 a month for Toast. Hmm. Bill trends probably $800 a month. But I'm not paying workers comp. I don't pay overtime. <laughs> you know, and that's why we're all ordering from kiosks. Yep. No injuries. Yep. I'm sick. Hung over. None of it. It's all done. You know, and that's where we've come to. And it's, it's kind of sad. Um, you know, the, the fight, if I have a fight with a noodle right now, it's strictly, I want more service out of my employees. I want, I would love for the kitchen staff to get up and walk out in an apron and say, how is everything? I want that. My manager's much younger. People don't expect that. Hmm. And it's just a different culture. Interesting. And I, you know, Noodle is built around a younger culture, so it's got longevity and the ability to grow it and then eventually sell it, because I'm not gonna live forever. Um, so no, no franchise it? No, the idea is to franchise it, nice. eventually. Yeah, nice. um, and that's why it's set up the way it is. But it's, it's but it's you know it's fun. But I'm I'm learning so much. It's well, I I'm mean, learning. You built it from the ground. I mean, that's everything. <laughs> I mean, used probably the be, easiest part was building the building because it was not paying the that. fucking bill. I'll tell you it, that. Used to, <laughs> it used to be a driveway. It used to, yeah, be, used a to be a driveway. driveway. <laughs> Noodle used to be a driveway. A twenty-seven hundred dollar a year driveway. <laughs> I know, <laughs> fancy ass driveway. I just got the fucking uh, the assessment. I just got it. <laughs> I said, oh. "Is this is this my assessment? Should I argue this because it says a hundred percent? This is my assessment." They're like, mm. "Yeah, the common level ratio has already been applied to." I'm like, "Fuck." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says, "You can argue it, and maybe I'm wrong." Or he said, "Maybe, yeah, maybe I'm wrong, and it's less. Or maybe I'm wrong, and it's more." I'll tell you. I, I used to tell ah, him, fuck you. <laughs> it's such a dick. Man. He's a really nice guy. I'll, ah, fuck you. I was well, I was talking common level cool. ratio a while back, and I was telling people always argue it. And yeah. I was like, they never raise it. Always argue it. It goes down or it stays the same. Well, it depends if you're a dick, I guess. And, until right? a guy got his raised, and he's like, I thought you said they never raise it. Yeah. I was like, I don't work for the government. I looked at it, and, if I, and if, I, if I argued it, and they raised it to, you know, like what they're on right now was exactly my appraisal, my pre build appraisal. And I'm like, eh, I don't know if I really want to. <laughs> What's the common level ratio right now? Is it 60, 71? 45. Ooh. Okay. 45. Really? Yep. So you take your assessment value, di divide it, hit division, which still doesn't make sense in my head. Not a lot. But whatever your assessed value is, division, 0.45, and that gives you your, your actual value, what you can sell your home for. Okay. To go up. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Right. So, so that, why that, do you, that's gotcha, what you can sell your gotcha. home, home for, and then you take that and you go on the county assessment site, which I just learned all this. You go so on then the county assessment site. Couldn't you go like point five? Couldn't you multiply it by point five five from your sale price, like your comps? Multiply but and get the same number? I'm not that fucking smart. I don't, I don't know. Why do you have to divide <laughs> it? Why couldn't you just set the rate that it was just the What, rate? it's appraised at and then just divide yeah. it? Yeah, because because they said basically what they're sending out is saying hey listen you were originally assessed at forty five thousand dollars for a driveway. Okay. Now I'm assessed no. at a, a million. little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I never. That's what you get for a building. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, because I'm going to fucking show them. <laughs> <laughs> that was my point. It's like, I'm going to show you motherfuckers. I'm going to put failed. a bill in there. Fuck you. I'm not paying that 27000 I'm going to pay eighty. <laughs> yeah. 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 Take that. I win. Take and that check to the bank. noodles for dinner. <laughs> As I said, the assessment officer was like, have you been in the noodle yet? He's like, no. I'm like, well, I got to pay my fucking tax bill. Get so, your ass you know. over there. <laughs> <laughs> Buy some for the family. Take it home. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of noodles, buddy. It's a lot, That's of, noodles. A lot of noodles. Well, the nice part is you did it smart, though. You got the rentals upstairs. So while you're getting the, the the foot traffic going downstairs, you got the regular income coming in. Yeah, offsetting costs. That's that's brilliant. Yeah, what's you know they you know they never make money right away. No, they don't. No, so it, it's, it, it's working. Al- although for what it's worth, everybody always says about how many how often restaurants fail. Yep. But the reality is, as a percentage, they they fail at a higher percentage, but not or at a higher rate, but not because they fail more. They actually fail less. They what they're talking about is more restaurants are open than anything else. It's just a numbers game. There are so many restaurants getting opened every single year. Oh, right, right, right. A right. smaller percentage actually go out of business than most other <clears throat> businesses, but it's such a large number because so many get opened. Right. You might get five insurance agencies, but 500 restaurants. And four of those insurance agencies go out of business, but yeah. 350 restaurants, well, those numbers look shitty for restaurants. But in fact, restaurants actually have a 50% higher success rate than insurance agencies. It's like the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate is only 5.3%. What about the twenty three percent that aren't looking for a job? Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't count. Well, yeah, wait a minute. It does. It counts. It, it's. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. Wait, it doesn't it, count because they gave up. It doesn't count because you broke right. their. <laughs> you broke their <laughs> spirit, <laughs> so it doesn't count anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, that's oh, not because it works. you're giving them so much in subsidies and so forth. They don't want to work because they don't have to, and they don't. They don't need just to. Just turn the tap off. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just there you go. All of us. But, but then it's going to look bad. Bad optics. We did it in the '90s. It looked great for everybody. I mean, Clinton still brags about it, and the, you know, it's. I mean, and it was, and so does Newt Gingrich, and the two of them like hug it out every time because yep. they did welfare reform. It's the same thing. Yep. No, it's not bad optics if you do it right. If you don't Agreed. take it away, you just add stipulations. Yes. Like, you've got to be looking. You've got to be trying. You've got to be putting the effort in. You can't just oh, be drug sitting. testing. Drug testing. You got it. Yeah. Throw it out there. That's right. <laughs> Fail a drug test, you don't get public money. That's <laughs> not. Ah, <sighs> yeah, give them needles. Or we give them needles. Yeah, but, but that's <laughs> but that's how you buy voters. That's uh, uh yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. See, this is how we go off Here topic. We, oh, see, this is go. <laughs> I thought you said no religion, no politics. <laughs> see, this is where going. See, see, this is why I don't talk. <laughs> no, I think you need to talk more. <laughs> I just talk a very little bit. <laughs> yeah, too just enough to poke the bear and get it going. <laughs> <laughs> I see so, why you have him on now. Okay, no, on. Jimmy's great. Jimmy's great. <laughs> Until he's not. And, and you can tell by my twitchy okay. left eye when he gets to that point. Like, I start to d- develop a sty right here that's just growing. <laughs> so Tyler can see the mirror. Your eyes twitching. He shuts his mic off. You're good to go. He just arm tackles me. <laughs> he's not actually the producer. He's the enforcer. He, oh, is that he what keeps it to a line? Somebody's got to keep this shit together. That's right. That's Tyler's job. And let's be fair. Whatever came down to that, Jimmy would beat my ass. <laughs> I wouldn't stand five seconds. <laughs> I was in the military for Christ's sake. I'm a tech guy. I bet he can't. <laughs> I'm just going to drink. My I'm putting my money on Jimmy. So, hey, so getting back, at, unless we're talking about noodling some more, but um, getting back to the construction, how many homes are you guys doing a year now? On Turnberry. You know, last year we did three. This year we had two to start, and then when the rates uh, went up, um, no, we had three to start. When the rates went up, two went on hold, one left. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Yep. You know, because and the one that left ended up being, you know, they were leveraged as much as they could possibly be. So as soon as the rate went up. They, they were out. They, they were pushed were out. Um, so, so that's that. Um, the other two, they're on hold. One, uh, and I don't think either... I think here, one's a one's a move uh, from another state. Oh, and the other one can't find a lot, mm. building a lot, man and okay. township. It's yeah, uh, right. Yep. So yep. they got the, they'll spend. We're not live, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean they'll spend the three hundred thousand dollars for a lot, no problem. It's finding it. Mm-hmm. They just can't, yeah, can't find get it. it. You know, and he's a finance guy, so he wants to be in man and township. Um, and he wants me to be the builder. There's nothing available. Say around there, there's nothing at all. No. Yeah, so hmm. you know, I, I did a spec home there, uh, which which was great. Um, 
Yeah, it's just tough. Mm. It's so tough. you, how long have you been a builder? 2005. I'm so you, you build, what, two to four houses a year? Yeah, we probably... Just kick-ass houses? Yeah, we probably average that, yeah. So, you know, in Berks County was a real struggle, so that's why I ended up going to the Lancaster market, and I'm on the board of directors down there, uh, vice president of the Builders Association down there now. And um, Lancaster's a pretty hot spot it's, for... It's a uh, great spot if you can find a place There's a lack build. of housing there. there I was looking at some statistics. There's a lack of housing everywhere. One. Yeah. Well, yes. Lancaster's pretty... I think, if I'm not mistaken, was a pretty hot, a good hot spot for. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <clears throat> They're because growing. Lancaster was, was ranked at, I know, in the top ten, may even be even less, top seven or something like that, uh, in the country for places to move and places uh, mm-hmm. for younger generations to come in. Yeah, Lancaster's a cool spot. Oh, it's unbelievable. It is. Yeah, the city's a little rough, but everything outside. The yeah, but it's, it's, there's just like options there, you know. Like there is. There's just other things going on. Like you know, it's the only. I mean, like Philadelphia is just a, a kind of a mess. But it's Simple. it's just got a lot of potential there. Well, you've got to... you've, it's it's rare in PA to see an up and coming town. You've mm-hmm. got a lot of declining towns in PA, like yep. you know, like the Norris towns and the and the Yorks and everything else. Reading, where yep. it's it's really it's a tough environment. But then you've got um, we're bookended by two towns that are doing great right now. Yeah, like Allentown is absolutely on the upswing. Yep, and Lancaster is on the upswing. Yeah, and I, it's kind of awesome. Yeah, it's a cool thing to see. It really is. Pennsylvania hasn't had success in a while. No, it hasn't. And you know, I think as as those towns end up coming in closer and closer, and we're talking more about this rail, which is it looks surprisingly like, it like it's coming closer and closer. You know, with that with that rail going down the Philly, mm-hmm. huge. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to change. You get a lot of the old school, the old guard in Reading, Aaron Berks County, are stressing about it because it's going to create change. Yep. It's going to bring a lot of commuters up here. You know, change demographics, but I don't think it's a bad thing. No, it's I mean, not. I, it's not. I think I don't either. It's, I don't know. Yeah. But that said, get a hold of property before it happens. Yeah. <laughs> See, I do. Once the Philly people start living up here, that's the prices are going to go through the roof. Yep. Yep. So but the over, other thing is, oh, go ahead. So over your, uh, how, how many, how many houses have you built in Berks County compared to Lancaster? Oh, many more. So Lancaster uh, ground up has been one. We've done probably a handful of renovations down there. Um, commercial is actually a little bit better down there. So um, I've got more connections commercially down there than I do residentially, um, and a lot of fit outs down there, which has been great. We love that work. You know, it's quick in, it's quick out. Um, as a, as as a company owner, it's it's quick cash, um, make people happy and. So you do a lot of just renovation work as well? Yeah, down there. Not as much new construction. Uh, like I said, the only new construction was a new home. We had an, uh, um, an parade of homes down there, so uh, which was great. It was great exposure, great everything else. But the area in Manham Township is just difficult to find any yeah. any land. It really yeah. is. So I think you know going forward and looking out two, three years, I think we'll probably take another really hard run at that Lancaster market, but we're gonna start looking outside of that big uh, metropolitan area, look on the outskirts and see what we can do to bring something in. You know, in Berks County, my thinking now going forward is I'd like to build, and I have to come up with the right plan yet, um, about a 14 to 1500 square foot home, no garage. Okay. Um, Eight foot tall basement, poured walls. I only know quality construction I, I i'm not going to skimp on any of the any of the quality components your walls aren't going to sink and you're not going to crack trim all this other shit um but at the end of the day you've got a quality home a base home that you know in nowadays market can be affordable and i always think about you know that um you know i'm divorced i always think about you know divorce situation you want to you know you're, you're getting out of it you want to move into something you want to have something for kids to grow up and be safe and maybe a small community that would really be ideal We'll see if that ever comes to fruition. Who knows what I'll do. But um, that smaller home, I think there's a real market for it because people can't afford to move into a new home anymore. No, what about um, like uh, uh, family quarters, like uh, like in-law quarters and stuff like that? I think that's been huge. I kind of think moving forward, that's going to become... Yeah, that's everybody's doing it right man. now. Well, we because really you, can't, you can't sell your parents' house and move them in somewhere affordable. Correct. That's gone. Mm-hmm. That that yeah. option was was nice for a while, but it's it's exited. Yep. There's now you're not going to find an apartment. Uh, you might find an assisted living facility, but they may not be ready for that. But they also shouldn't be at home. Right. Um. I, I think that's gonna that's not gonna stop. No, it's not. I was out on one yesterday what if, again. What if there was like spaces like where it was thought out, where there were, it was convertible spaces where you had the options, 
<clears throat> you know, like you did layouts where, you know, adding in-law quarters was an option that like you actually had the, the, the foresight to design it that way. I think that would be a pretty cool feature because, um, you know, you don't, not everybody necessarily wants it, mm -hmm. but you know, and I don't know how you lay out a floor plan like that, but if you think about it, um, lay it out in a specific way that that could be converted. I think that would be a, a plus to own a home like that. Yeah, and so that's a lot what we do. So, or what I do personally is I really meet with the client and I'll challenge them on anything they want. So they'll we'll come in. I'll say, you know, give me some pictures of homes that you think are neat, and they can come from anywhere. They drove by a home and they found three on the internet and so forth. And I'll see common themes, and I'll start putting those together. Okay, so this is kind of what they're looking at. Uh, give me some interior pictures of things that you found or things you like. And Aunt Betty's just had her thing done and it was done. And it was great and whatever. I, I want to see what you see. At the end of the day, I can build what anyone else can, can envision. I just need to see what it is. And then at the end, really, at the end of the day, <laughs> quite honestly, <laughs> the, you know, the truly end, at the end of the day, the it's got to meet the budget. So the it's, it's, really, it's really saying, okay, you showed me all these pictures. You told me what you want. What's your budget? Fourteen dollars, <laughs> and they never they never match, and that's okay. They never do. That's okay. You're, that's you're okay. like, damn, I need fifteen, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it, but then it's then it's the fun part of saying, okay, well, you're going to need to sacrifice, um, you know, a, a stained wood ceiling, and I can do that, but I can put a couple little accents up in there that look like this, and I'm getting close to your budget. Oh, well, that would work exactly, right? Gotcha. So it's taking them out of because we all get these preset or predetermined ideas in our mind. And this is what I have to have, and this is what it's got to be. Well, it doesn't because it's not in the budget. It's not not that they can't afford it; they can afford it. They can't justify it, right? And that's at the end of the day for every one of us. Listen, we go to TJ Maxx or Target or whatever it is, and we look at a shirt, and we're like, twenty-seven dollars for a T-shirt? I'm not paying that. I can't justify it. I can afford it. We can all afford twenty-seven dollars for a shirt. Absolutely, we can. I can't justify it. Hmm. And at the end of the day, when we're building new homes and we're doing construction projects, commercial, residential, what can you justify spending on this? And then it's up to me to say, okay, here's how I can meet your budget and get as close to your goal as possible. Hmm. And that's what I do. So that's how we do it. Where that goes to your point of saying in-law suites and how do we justify that, it's really just challenging those putting those challenging questions out there. I want this, I want that, I want this, and then I want my mom to move in here eventually. Okay, well, here's how this is gonna work, and the mom's gonna have to pony up 100 grand. Okay, well, when she sells her home, she'll have 80. All right, well, we can knock out, knock this area out, and we can frame it this way, and the, running, the electrical run out, so this area is all cut out and ready to be opened yeah. up for a doorway to go into the in-law suite. That's... So when she is ready to go, this is where it goes, and we're gonna design it right now, the in-law suite, for about that 80 grand okay knowing your prices are going to go up but so will the value of our home right so let's look at this whole thing as a financial picture only and then make our decisions on finishes and trims that's awesome yeah, so that's like how we, now, that's you, how do, so you do something like that and now like you market the home and you say that this like plan this floor plan for a suite is laid out mm -hmm. and these things are in position you know what i mean i think that's a, a benefit and i think moving forward you know whatever is going to happen, you know, with dollar and all yeah. this other stuff. Yeah. I think that, you know, there's, we're going to have a, a I think a, a point in time where there's going to be families that are going to be. Well, I think the only problem with the in-law suite is a, yeah. it's the same as an in-ground pool. It helps with a buyer that wants that thing. So, well, yeah, if, it's, it, if it's, it's there, but it if becomes you have a specialty item, like but if, but if you have like, like there's you really some, want to add value, <clears throat> Put a baller kitchen in, like, right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's gonna get you. But, but 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 to have the ability to be able to make a to make a change, like yeah. it, it's like building with the end you mean in to mind. Have the flexibility in yeah. the plan. You mean yeah. yeah so that's so nice. it's so it's like when you, it's like when you do something like that and you have all this all, all these like things that are buried, that don't have to be redone, like it, it's there's value there. Like, yeah, you know, there like, definitely is. So yeah, every right. anytime I do a, like a renovation or something, it's always like I always think. What if I need to rip it apart? Oh yeah, Jimmy does right? renovations too. Oh great! So Job number like seven hundred and sixty-five thousand. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, what if I need to rip this apart, or what if someone needs to rip this apart, or I got to redo or undo? Like I always lay the groundwork to make that easier for me when I'm doing a project. I always want to be able to change it easily. Yeah. So I think, and maybe, 
you know, this is one of those things that I think in the future would be more beneficial. Well, and to piggyback off that, That's I mean, cool. we'll, we'll take that in-law suite so it's all ready to go. But when grandma dies a year after that comes in, or excuse me, a year after they built the house, well, useful. what happens is the master bedroom is, I always tell them, let's put the master bedroom up on the second floor because you can walk the stairs. But eventually you're going to want a first floor master. So when we open this up, let's set it up that you have a first floor master when you get to be that age. Hmm. And now you're all set for your kids to come in, go upstairs, I like that. and you can live out the rest of your years here. So we're looking at longevity. You know, at, hmm. the, at the end of the day now, you've spent probably your max or a little more than you wanted to spend, but those future dollars have shrunken so much that it makes so much more sense for your kids to move in and help you plan for your future it, and is, your, your eventual death. Is that <laughs> new? And I, I know for the longest time there, longevity was never a thing. Like, I mean, I mean, like, <laughs> well, it's, it's basically it's, for most of the 2000s, it was like, I'm going to build something, I'll be here for five, 10 years maybe, and I'm moving. But are we moving back towards longevity? Are people planning for the long haul? Like, I, mean, I can't say, I, I don't, it's, it's my approach. I don't think it's a common approach. Okay. Uh, you know, like many, many business owners look at what, you know, what, what can I do now and how can I sell this and what, what can I do now? How do I satisfy their needs? How do I get my money and how do I go? Um, I can't speak to everyone because not everyone's like that. I just, I can only speak to my approach and that's my approach. So I will really, and it's not like an interview, but I will ask the same questions in different ways all the time to try and see if they're repeating the same answer over and over again and then really make the determination and come back to them and explain to them. So when I sit down with a plan and actually go over with them and they go, well, why would you put that there? I don't even give them that option. Here's why I did this and here's how I made the flow and this is why I put this here because this is what you told me. Mm. And oftentimes, uh, not almost every single time, they're like, oh yeah, huh. oh, I, didn't, I didn't really think of that. Huh. That's not your job to think of it. Your, your job is to tell me your issues. It's my job to solve. And now you're establishing yourself as an expert and you're making the next recommendation easier to digest. But it's so much fun. Building trust. It's it really, it, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a sales tactic. It's really, truly what I enjoy doing. That's cool. It ends up just becoming a sales tool. So it's fun. I, well, one thing I will say is I, it's, it's, I did, I was in the construction world in the semi-custom. <clears throat> what you do is true custom. Yep. Like you get into every aspect of that house with the customer. It's, I don't think most people, even in the, in the industry, know how in-depth that is. I mean, three houses in a year is a lot for truly custom. Yeah. That's an intense cycle because there's a lot of man hours just in design and meetings and figuring out hinges. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it is. The, the pulls, it is. like different yeah. little, because every little thing matters. Well, can we have brush nickel on the inside of this door handle and then can we have black on the other side? Yes. Hmm. Did you think about the fixtures as well? What fixtures? Well, <laughs> your lights are going to be nickel or they're going to be black. Oh, yeah. You got to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. You got to think, you know, because it's not going in and then all of a sudden you're coming back and asking questions. No, so that's really cool. That that's very cool. That's very, I, I like that, that, uh, it seems like it's gotten, it's obviously harder with the way it is right now, but I feel like you're so well established at this point. Like your name is known throughout the industry. Like even, even within competitors, they, they respect what you do. I'll tell you, it's a lot of fun in the sense that, so the, the guy I have newest for me, um, Justin mm -hmm. had gone out to a site and we sent him out to do the final inspection with the inspector. Uh, great inspector will tell you just, you know, kind of like we are like, ah, that's not right. That, and, and, and I said, but he's going to be nice with you. He's going to talk to you. So we walked through the property and, uh, this is my reputation. I know, I know him very well and the inspector, excuse me. And Justin calls me and says, oh, the inspector walked through and he failed this, that, the other thing. I said, so what did he tell you to do? He says, he told me to just get it fixed. And I said, that's right. Do you know why he told you that? No, why? And I said, that's my reputation. <laughs> so here's how you're going to build a reputation. Did he ask you to call him back and reinspect? He said, no, he didn't. And I said, exactly. So what you're going to do, I said, did he, or I said, did, did he want pictures? Nope. He said, you're good. Just get it fixed and you'll be done. And I said, so you're going to take pictures once everything is done. You're going to send it to him. You're going to explain everything that was done, the date and time it was all done. And then you're going to follow up with him and make sure that he got it. Nice. That's how you're going to build your reputation, your trust with that inspector. That's awesome. That's can I, now that he's not in the business anymore, can I tell you what Walter Greth used to do with inspectors? Ah! I already know. <laughs> oh, do you? Can I, can I tell you Walter Greth um, is the probably kindest, most giving man oh I've my ever God, met yeah. in my life. He'd give you the shirt right off so, the back. 
when I was president of the Home Builders Association um, <clears> and, and <throat> my time on the board there, there were many, many times, many, many times that Walter donated money to people in need, mm -hmm. um, to the Home Builders Association, um, and again, people in need. He would do things and he would say, you will not use, I will give you this money, but you will not use my name. You will not let anyone know that I did any of this. Yep. Walter is, while he was rough and grumble on the outside, Walter was the kindest man, the most giving man I've ever met. My I life. ran his marketing department for six years and the amount of money that yeah. I moved on his behalf to help people out that he never, he was like, your job is to make sure <clears throat> nobody knows it's me. Yep. Um, yep. But him with, he had, he had two special skills besides just being a really nice guy. One was if you put him in front of an angry room. Special skill? He could, he could be more angry. <laughs> no, he, was, he had this ability. I remember this one time, right? So I'm in Exeter. And it was an angry room of Exeter people. I don't know what we were building. We were building something. We had bought some land. We were building houses. And everybody was pissed. There was going to be too much traffic and all the same crap. And so I'm sitting there. I'm like 25 at the time. So I'm like, I'm like everybody. I don't know. For some reason, my voice was still breaking at 25. I don't know. Like, everybody, calm down. It's going to be okay. You know, I'm on the verge of tears. I'm like, stop yelling at me. I'm 25. And so Walter didn't want to come. But he knew I was going to get just blasted. This was my first township meeting ever. Oh, gosh. And he knew I was going to. I think he sent me just to have this happen. He was like, oh, you're going to be fine out of here. <laughs> so I went, and I'm getting yelled at. Everybody's screaming at me. It's a bunch of people that are pissed. And the more they all yell, and I'm getting my ass kicked, the more they want to yell. Walter comes in, and I swear to God, I'm 100% I'm sure he didn't. But in my memory, he kicked the doors in in the back of the room. <laughs> and just both doors go flying open, and he walks in with that kind of like limp. But it's not a limp. It's kind of a swagger. Yeah. And he's like, everybody shut up. <laughs> and they did. And he walked up to the front, and he's like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build the houses. All right? You're all going to be happy when it's done. It's going to look great. The traffic's going to be great. Everything's going to be great. And you're all going to be much better off than you were right now. Any questions? Everybody goes, no, I guess that's fine. And he goes, all right, great. I'll see you guys in a month. We'll have another meeting. And he left. And everybody just left. And I was like, how did he, how did he, how did he do that? Like, they were, they were going to murder me. They, they're they, like, they they're like me. who's this bald guy? <laughs> who's this bald guy here <laughs> perpetrating to, to be day. Mr. Greth? It was a gift. I don't know. Walter Greth. The guy was a, was a living legend. But uh, for inspectors, he used to intentionally leave the exit signs and the fire extinguishers off. And every, every build we did. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So, yep. so that he would never, and, his, and he always, he called it inspector sleight of hand. And he goes, if you give them something to find, they won't look for the things you don't want them to find. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you're you know, not supposed to announce that. You're I, not. But well, he's is, out of business now. It's fine. He's gone. <laughs> But we still use that as builders. <laughs> <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> edit, but edit, the funny thing, the first time you ever did it, though, is I'm like, I'm like, we're settling tomorrow. Can we get exit signs and everything in time? He's like, of course we can. They're in my trunk. <laughs> Here, here's some crayons. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he already had a team of guys waiting outside. He's like, boys, put him in. He's like, he fell for it. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <"Jesus."> <laughs> That's great. Anyway, we're running out of time here. Tyler, you've been oddly quiet this episode. I've been thinking about pork belly. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you can get some. All right, exactly. Noodle. TheNoodle.com. <laughs> oh, Ooh. We got to go get it. There's a oh, pork. Yeah. We got to get it. You could be a pork <laughs> noodler. <laughs> so, and while you're waiting for your custom home to be built, have some ramen. There you that go. That sounds very good. There you go. All right, you I, have, all together. I have a, a pertinent qu a, a question. Lay it on me, brother. Um, so have you rehabbed houses? Have you taken anything... Uh, do you have you done some rehabs and restorations? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we we've done uh, for flipping purposes or for what? Like flipping your own? Yeah. So we we flipped uh, probably the most recent one was a couple of years ago. Uh, a friend of mine, his parents had passed away. Uh, purchased the home, uh, did a renovation on it, flipped it. Um, that one was profitable. Um, not something I really enjoy doing. So you enjoy yeah. new construction better. It depends. I, you know, I, I like being a little more creative. Um, that's more of just a, a financial get it in, get it done. Um, do it as inexpensively as you can. Mm -hmm. um, now, was it a nice house? Like, was it like, let's say it was an old, 
you know, it was an old ranch. It was an old ranch or an old farmhouse or something like that, where you've got five acres in this like yeah, great no, that, plot. That, that's a different. Know. That's a different story. And and you know so that those could be fun. They they could be, but you know that's that's just a money <clears throat> bet. Yeah, oh yeah. So no. you're gonna lose your ass on it every time. And um, but I've done work for clients. Did one down near uh, Daniel Boone Homestead, and that was originally part of the homestead. Um, we had renovated that tore out the entire gable wall and put an addition on that home. Um, Beautiful home, amazing clients, and um, yeah, just just an incredible project. Hmm. So So what what makes you say it's a money pit? Like why do you? Old homes are always a money pit. (laughs) There's always something breaking, there's always something. Um, I I find, like I love renovating houses. Oh, I do too. It's like to, to take something crappy that's like just all jacked up and like bring it back to life is well you're good at it too right? yeah but 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 are you spending the money on it or is the client spending the money well i've spent the money on it yeah, yeah. it but but at the end of the day yeah i didn't do it for it's tough it's i didn't do it for a customer right I but did it, it's tough to make money on any of that stuff i mean it's just because you just constantly you know it's it's all the old piping that that shot so now you're doing all the old all the plumbing and it was a cesspool so now it's a septic mat you know and, and at the end of the day you put so much money into them they're beautiful I would love to do them all day long. I agree with you 100. percent That's probably one of my favorites. Um, I would say, from a net lot of money. standpoint, though, you're living at the 10 percent mark. It's uh, if you're doing it right. The three hundred thousand dollar house, you're only thirty, forty thousand dollars at best. Everything's said and done. It's it's tough to with make new money construction out. or with no with rehabs because rehabs are usually so. In this market, I mean, not that long ago, the rehab market was so much better. Yes, because mm-hmm. there was not nearly as many yeah. buyers in the market. Right, so you could get a better deal and rehab it and sell it at market rates. But now, it's razor thin. You have one setback. It's hard to find break it. even. You have two yes. setbacks. You're losing money. Well, you've got um, a lot more competition in there as well. You have got anyone and everyone that's looking to flip because they believe they can. They've seen it on TV, mm-hmm. um, and so they're paying these high dollar values. So to your point, your margins are so slim. Um, it, it's a tough game to play in. That's not our game. It's yeah. not what we do. I've gotten out of it too. It's, yeah. it's just nothing there. Yeah. It's, that's why maybe with high interest rates, we'll get some of these people out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. again, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Start maybe it won't be. It's not. It's just it's just not for us. I mean, it, it's a good game for, for some, and, and, and it can be great. Uh, it can be very lucrative. It's just not one that I play in. So uh, I know my sandbox, and that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> good for Nothing you. wrong with that. Yep. <laughs> Well, hey, we are out of time. Kevin, thank you so much. Yeah, thank Turnberry you. Custom thank you. Homes and Noodle. Turnberry Eat. Construction Group. Turnberry Construction Group. I'm sorry. It's literally on the screen. <laughs> I'm, I'm, look, I'm not that bright. Right? It's genetic. My dad wasn't bright either. Oh, okay. it's, it's long line. I hope he's fault. not listening. It's, it's his fault. <laughs> Absolutely. Not, he, can't, he can't figure out how to work a podcast. He's, he's 75. He doesn't know what's going on. I can say whatever I want here. <laughs> he has no idea how to hit play. <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on. Hey, Kevin, thank you. Yeah, much. thank you. Tyler, thank Jimmy, you. thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, Everybody, thanks, have a great day. We'll see you next week. Bye. So. The Broken Agenda Podcast. Sponsored by Laughing Rock Technology. <laughs>